Welcome to the Chris and Sam podcast. Pull up a bar stool and join us for a random conversation, guaranteed to make you think or your money back. Good morning, Vietnam. I just always wanted to say that. It makes no sense at all. <laughs> I know Thanks. it doesn't. I know, but you know, what the hell? So, Chris here, and I'm here with Sam for the Chris and Sam podcast. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? It's good. Yeah, you've been working all day this morning, today, from yep. the early hours yeah. of the morning. Yeah. Actually, it's, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm half asleep. <laughs> it's called so that made Anzac no sense. Day. I yeah. think that's what you were about yeah. to say. It's Anzac Day. It's so, did you see the Dawn Parade people and all that stuff while you were out this morning? Yeah, it was a bit weird because there was about 20 of them outside my car this morning. Right. It took me four seconds to figure out what all these people were doing swarming around my car. What? Um, outside out, here. Outside here. At this yeah, they were all coming down the, they were all coming down the street. Yeah, yeah. About 100 of them. And wow. I was like, and they were looking at me because I think they were thinking, why is this guy getting in his car? Yeah, because you were leaving and they were arriving. And they were obviously just walking into town. Yeah, so. well, it's only across the river. I, I forgot all about the Dawn Parade till I heard um, the drums and all that. And yep. I was like, oh, damn, I forgot it again. Yep. I've never been to the Dawn service or whatever. So ever. you weren't like the dropkick um, bikey gang that turned up later in Wairu. Yeah, and they, they left during the last post or something and drowned yeah. it out or something yeah. like that. Bunch of winners. No, they yeah. turned up late, I think, and they that's when they turned up. Oh, man. And their bikes were drowning it out. So yeah. I think there was a few people that wanted to punch heads. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, it's hard to say. I was thinking about it, actually. So for us, somebody, you know, this whole generation of people, this whole bunch of young people yes. went off and fairly willingly died, yep. laid down their yep. lives and stuff. And I don't want to talk about whether that's good or bad because there are good and bad aspects to it, right? Okay. But yep. the point is, a hundred years later, we're looking at that, and most of us can't really conceive of it. And what makes me wonder is, what will people look at a hundred years from now, back at what we do today, and go, why would they do that? And, and it's something that we think is just normal. Yeah, crappy internet comes to mind. Um, well, I was thinking more along the lines of hunting and trophy hunting and all oh, that. Oh, Because you've seen a lot of uh, Ricky Gervais at the moment. He's been tweeting the hell out of, you know... The, the animal stuff, animal, animal stuff. rights. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I totally agree with them. I think you know why are we you know killing you know rhinos to take their horns and that? That there's only three of four of the um, certain white rhino left. Yeah, yeah. They've got that team day that, and night, yeah, twenty four seven. Like, you know. So what does that mean? <laughs> demand, demand and supply. It means their horns even more valuable now. Sounds there's like, only four sounds of like them. sounds like the start of a good plot to a movie. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to write that With, one. like, Brad Pitt guarding the rhino himself, riding it around. <laughs> and then the poachers come and, you know, all hell breaks loose. Yeah, and the rhino dies in the end. No, 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 the rhino survives. The rhino is the only living thing. Brad Pitt has to give his life For to the save the rhino. Don't ask me how that works, but, yeah. Well, yeah, we can work that out. Yeah. We can work that one in. Sweet. So, anyway, yeah, so um, there were a lot of people out uh, at the uh, dawn service and Anzac today... Um, I think all over the country from the little bit of uh, social media I've looked at, seems like it was a huge turnout. Yeah, so, it seems yeah. pretty big. So that's good. That's a good thing. And what else have you been up to lately? Um, not too much. <laughs> it's exciting <laughs> for a podcast. No, um, I had to endure the hellhole that is Chipmunks Playland. Right. So, yeah, wh what is that? Yeah, I have to explain this to Chris because he's void of uh, any knowledge of children-based activities. Yes. It's a industrial warehouse building and they've put up this huge, uh, there's a slide and then there's this weird ball pit with compressed air cannons and the kids fire balls at each other. That sounds sort of dangerous. Uh, it's only to the cannons. The cannons are behind shields. Oh, uh, right, it's right. hard to explain, but on a normal day, it's... The sound of probably a jet engine or something stupid. And then school holidays, they had a school holiday program and there was probably 20 or 30 kids in there all screaming and yelling. And then some community group turned up with another 60 kids and it just went through the roof at how loud this was. It's louder than a rock concert. And when you leave, the uh, the sound is deafening. Well, the oh, silence wow. is deafening, I mean. Wow. So um, I had to enjoy that. Although, but your daughter had fun. At it. Yeah, yeah. Although slowly... <laughs> I assume, I guess, 
I've built up an immunity to it over the couple of times I've been there. So if you went straight in at school holiday time, uh, you'd run out the door, I think, eventually. So what's this cost you to get in? Oh, some stupid price. Um, I think it's 12 bucks. Uh, okay. It's not too bad. Uh, how many hours would... They can they can hang around as long as they want. So yeah, we were How many for... hours can you manage? <laughs> oh, we were there for two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. A, a great amount of mo- value for money, I don't think. Ah, oh, kids seem to have fun, so that's all good. Yeah, that's the main thing, I guess. And yes. so, and you can have a coffee and stuff there. Yeah, they've got that, they've that's... got their own food. Yeah, as long thing. as they know how to uh, cater for the adults, it'll be a success, as far as I can tell. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So um, now you went to Fast and Furious Seven. Yes, I did. Uh, okay, so I haven't gone to that. I'm not sure that I will, and I have. I think I've seen three of the previous movies. Yeah, probably. I'd, I'd seen bits and pieces of movies. So I've seen the first one. I'd seen most of the second one. I'd seen the start of the third one and the end of the fourth one somehow. Anyway, I watched one to six back to back. Uh, the Pure BS podcast guys end up talking about Furious, Fast and Furious almost every episode now. Uh, uh-huh. I think they're going to rename their podcast that. <laughs> but uh, they, they had some good points. And um, so I went and saw it on Cheap Tuesday. So it's only 10 bucks. So oh, cool. Not, I wasn't so yeah, a bit of a shout out to the Pure BS uh, podcast guys, eh? Yeah, Cheers, yeah. guys. But yeah, so um, it, it's escalating. So I hear December 2017, they've uh, agreed to yes, uh, Fast and today. Furious 8 is going to be... Uh, he says it's going to be the best one ever. But yeah, the, it's, that's what they say every time, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's the amount of money they're bringing in. They're, they're, as a franchise, they're going to overtake... Oh, I can't think what it is now. Some other massive movie. Like Terminator or oh, Aliens or something. Yeah, I should really have researched that. Just take my word for it. <laughs> but the it's crazy because it's... We, start, we don't want our, lad- our, our audience, our listeners, to be lazy. So no. we'll get them to research that themselves. Yes, do that yourself. Yeah. That's your you homework. Know, that's, yeah, that's your homework for the podcast. But it's crazy because it started off as a car racing movie and it's progressed and then they were into heists and now The Rock turns up and is like, I need you and your team to go sort this bad guy out. And most oh, of the... Oh, and, really? Yeah, and but the thing is, most of the bad guys never die. Like, they're all in prison. So I assume at one point they're all going to get out and they're going to have to face, you know, four or five of them at once. Ooh. And you know it's it's awesome because you've got like the rock crashing an ambulance off a bridge into a drone that's shooting at them, and then he rips the Gatling gun thing off it, and then he's walking around firing that. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta love that. You gotta love it's that. Pure, it's pure. Well, it's good because there's it. Well, I don't can't think of any other franchise. It's just pure action. Yeah, you don't need to think about oh, it. You, do you want to go and see um, Age of Ultron later? We can, we uh, at some point we can go see that. Yeah, maybe not today because you got to go to work in the morning, eh? Oh, we'll see how we go. We'll yeah, check yeah, times yeah. out. Because um, the guys uh, were talking about it last night. I was talking to the Podfiller guys. Another shout out. There you go, Podfellas. Um, and uh, they or Neil before Pod to be more pre- precise, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, they were talking about going the other day. They went to the opening night or whatever, and yeah, it, it was. They said it was almost like too much action. Oh, wow. Like you actually were fatigued from the amount of action oh. by the end of the movie. Okay. Um, I mean, That's interesting. So Adam said that, and he's an older guy. Yeah. Um, not as old as me, obviously, but he's an older guy. So um, he must be older because he's got a couple of kids, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how you judge everything. <laughs> That's how you judge everything. That's why I'm so young. Childless and young. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm laughing at Sam's face there. He's yeah. just losing it. All right. So anyway, um, but yeah, I've got to see that. I think it'll be really good. But they did say it was really good. Um, yeah, and, and it's they were trying to explain what the too much action was like. They were saying it's like having too much ice cream. And I'm like, that that, that doesn't be. register. That with doesn't you. register at all. There no. is no too much ice cream. I could never. Have too much ice cream. I don't yeah. Think so I think they got to get a new. Oh, metaphor. it'll be interesting then to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. I was. Um, have you seen um, the story about Opus in Australia? I think it's Opus or whatever. Um, they do the networks over there, and they're looking to charge Netflix a lot more money for working in Australia and yeah. using all the brand broadband because of bandwidth. Yeah. And, of course, that's been bringing a lot of uh, cries about net neutrality. Everybody should be um, charged the same. So and- for our overseas listeners over here, 
we've only just got Netflix. Yep, and it's in the a, last, what, three weeks? Yeah, something like that. And yeah. it's a New Zealand scaled down sort of, you know, it's, it's yeah, just for our Australia, market. Australia, though. Mm. So I think they're the same. Did they get Netflix about the same time or is it older? The, yeah. I think they might have just had it a bit longer. Yeah, I think they've but had every, it a bit longer. But every market's a bit different. So yeah. I don't know what they get and we don't get. Yeah, so, um, but the point was, I mean, I was looking at uh, something yesterday and it was like, there's been a big story about um, how much the internet has, the broadband has slowed down around New Zealand from the hours of 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. I think that's just some pure spin. You reckon? Yeah, I don't think that's, uh, because I read the comments on that on the website and they were saying, oh, you know, yeah, because a lot of people are talking about ADSL and they don't have fibre. Yeah. Um, and so it's sort of like taking you back to how dial-up used to be. Yeah. But I don't know how much of a spin's been put on that from the ISPs who are probably throttling it to have the argument that Netflix and all that's bad because they can't keep up with technology and have got, you know, crappier products that people don't want. Or they want to get people to move up to fibre so they're slowing down their ADSL. So. I think a lot of people would go to fibre if you had it in, the, in, in your area. Yeah, yeah. So fibre in New Zealand to, is still being rolled out. Yeah, it takes a, a while to thrust the pipes and stuff. Fairly slow. Uh, no, it's, it's sped up. It's that, sped up a lot more than it was. They're ahead but, of their targets. Yeah. But they the, the argument was they only spend the money when they absolutely must have to. Whereas in Australia, they rolled out fibre a long, long time ago because they yeah. had a lot of forethought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. It's like um, India and all of that. When they, The reason they became the technological hub was there was a couple of companies that spent a crap load of money putting fibre in yeah. and then went totally bankrupt. Oh, wow. And the government seized that stuff because they were gone and then went, oh, well, let's just fire it up and let commerce happen. And it just, that's cool. what started that whole, you know, Indi- Mumbai thing or whatever it is with India. Is that the tech capital, Mumbai, or is it somewhere else? I have no idea. I can't remember but now. But somewhere I, in yeah, India. It's somebody start, somewhere starting with an M. And yeah, and um, so they became call centers to the US and all that sort of thing just because that fiber had been put in the ground sort of almost accidentally. It wasn't like a planned thing. It yeah. just happened. And then... They went bankrupt, and the government, as I understand it, and I might be wrong, I read about this years ago, uh, co-opted it, grabbed it, and then started using it. So, anyway. Cool. So, um... Did you know that Pascal's have changed their milk bottle recipe? I did, because you told me. I know. Otherwise, I would have no, no clue. No. And, um... And I... I, Our other flatmate... I honestly uh, didn't think people bought them. But our other flatmate was rather shocked. She oh, yeah, she was pretty, had a pretty peed. Pretty big reaction to that, and I was like, okay. Is it because she's pregnant? I would think so. <laughs> um, so for international listeners out there, we call confectionery lollies in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, yep. And my, my mum and dad are English, so when we were kids, mum called them sweets. Yep. And I'd say sweets at school, and people are like, what are you on about, you weirdo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh. It's whatever. like crisps as well. Yeah, they're mum, not. Mum called them crisps. They didn't, my mum's English. They didn't get too. Yeah, they didn't say crisps too much. They picked up the chip thing pretty quick. Yeah, I think. yeah. Uh, but anyway, we've got a lolly here made by a confectionery company called Pascal's, which is New Zealand, I think. No, I think that's international, isn't it? I have no idea, actually. Anyway, they make this lolly called a milk bottle, which looks like a milk bottle. Yeah, it's, um, it's white and it's shaped like a milk bottle. It should taste like a milk bottle. And uh, they changed the recipe to uh, now not have any milk in them. <laughs> so, in a world first on podcasts, we have one packet of the new recipe. Um, yeah, I had to hunt these recipe down. And one packet of the old recipe. That's old recipe. And so you're, you're going to hear us chewing. Like, this is going to be the most outstanding we're going to podcast apolo- thing we will, ever. I know. Uh, I'm going to apologize <laughs> for the chewing, but this is the. I better just check. Check which one uh, allergen statement contains wheat, milk, added sulfites. That's yeah. the one. Oh, and that's the thing. They said they're getting rid of the milk because people are allergic to it. Yeah. These so, are really, really so, chewy. So don't freaking buy milk bottles if you're allergic to milk. This mm. is just my own sort of you observation. Know, if I was in, um, if I was allergic to peanuts, I wouldn't be getting a snit Snickers. You know, I would go. Ooh, I wouldn't go. Change your stickers and get rid of the peanuts. I reckon it's a ploy to save money somewhere. 
Oh, God, I remember why I don't eat these things. Well, these are really, really chewy. I'm not going to eat the second one. Hang on. So that, so they taste like how I always remember them um, as a kid. They always, in uh, random, uh, those lolly mixes you buy at the dairy, mm. there's always one or two of them. Like, I didn't know they still made them. and I didn't know they made them um, in packets and you just buy them. Yeah, never yeah. Buy there's them. a lot of things you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Not as good as pineapple. The, this only the only allergen statement on this is it contains wheat, and uh, now it's just got some flavouring and um, random stuff in it. So the flavouring is what fake milk. So Sam has popped one of the new ones in his mouth as chewing. There's a slight smirk on his face. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. They're ultra soft, um, and not very chewy, and not as satisfying. I gave you one, eh? That's a new one. They're a different colour. When you put they the are. two beside each other, you can see that's the new one. It's whiter. Mmm. A bit different. Okay, I'm going to try the new one now. That's totally different. It's almost like marshmallow in the middle. Yeah, it's sort of feeling ripped off now, eh? Mmm. No, oh, I like the texture better. I don't like the chewiness. Thing. No, the true ones are good. Yeah, anyway, there we go, live on a podcast. We're eating some lollies. It probably sounds terrible. Yeah, but well, i got to say, though, it um, does sound, it tastes different, and it tastes like powdered milk. You know when you get the powdered milk and it's quite sweet? Mm, yeah, okay, okay. It really does. Um, and I think I might actually prefer the new ones to the old ones. It's because you're old. It's because my teeth are old, maybe, and the new ones are softer. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, so we've done that. That was amazing podcast audio. Yeah, like I said, you heard it here first, folks. This is... World first lolly tasting or sweetie tasting if you're from the UK perspective on a on a live podcast. Yeah. Did you hear that live thing? Have you heard that at all? Like, okay, on, like so, on other podcasts. So yeah. the fighter and the kid they they've been talking about doing this um, a better um, startup. You know, get a, some music and stuff. Oh, like, they, 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 like an intro, you mean? Yeah, like an intro. They'd heard ours, obviously, and they thought, right, we've got to <laughs> up our game to get up with the Chris and Sam podcast, right? Yeah, okay. So they, they go into a studio because, you know, they're funded by Fox, so they've got everything they need. Mm. They go into a studio and they're doing this um, thing and they've recorded it and this guy's put it together. But, you know, uh, Callan, so... He's the old dude on their one. I'm the old dude on our one. But, you know, they just copied us everywhere, man. And um, Callan's like, he goes, coming at you live. And there's a like, scratchy noise, you know. And um, Brendan's like, dude, it's a podcast. It's not live. No, no, no. It sounds better when you say live. Coming at you live. And <laughs> it's just, they bicker about it. And But in the next, in that, First episode where they first played it, um, Callum wasn't actually in the episode. It, they had, um, oh, I forgot, Sasso. Sasso, Will Sasso was on it. And they were bitching about it. They are bitching about Callum, actually. And it's just like, if he said that in front of me, I'd want to punch him. Because, you know, old guys should know that podcasts are not live. They're, they are the antithesis of live. They are you listening to us when you want to. Pausing us when you want to, starting it when you want to, and listening to it wherever you want to, which is the opposite of live. <laughs> Excellent. You anyway. just like saying live a lot. I know. I know. I, Sorry. Live. live. That's how you got to do it. <laughs> uh, well, if you, if you listen to The Fighter and the Kid, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, no, I love that show. Anyway. Okay. And now you've got, I think everything so, else. Oh, God, God. That's three other podcasts we've already mentioned. In this one, I know. Look at the look at the <laughs> breath that you're using on these people. Yes, I know. I it's know. excellent. Uh, so you you've got some other things noted down here. Okay, have I? Most of the other stuff's yours, right? Because um, yeah, yeah, now you bring that up. Uh, things. Okay, now you brought up the ultra fast charging aluminium batteries. But anyway. Ah, oh, um, yes, that was also mentioned on a. Another podcast, which is called Science Faction, which runs on the Pure BS podcast network, which is new, and um, basically they think they've come up with a very fast charging aluminium, not aluminium. We say aluminium, so that sounds we, we say it right. We say it you right. Guys, Just want to say that. Idiots, that's all. Uh, you guys, <laughs> and it's uh, it's looking promising. It can charge in about a minute. It can hold its charge. It's in a little pouch. It's basically liquid at room temperature, and you can stab it, and it doesn't explode in your face. So that's pretty cool. Now, they're just trying to get the voltage up at the moment, 
So at the moment, they can get two volts out of it. Which is pretty pathetic. Well, no, uh, AA and a AAA battery is 1.5 volts. So they've okay. got something that can do that already. Oh, yeah. um, so they've got to work on that. And uh, yeah. But we'll they're flexible, did you say? Eh? They can be flexible. They can be flexible. That's, that, that, that makes some interesting, for some interesting design features. Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that would be interesting. Um, yeah, so one of the things I wanted to ask you is, have you come across Paperly before? I want to say yes, but I can't think exactly what it is. So it's some website, paper.li, and you can sign up there and you can set up a, something so that you get a ma- magazine published every month or something. Right, and the magazine I think oh, is yeah, auto published, yeah. and it just gets something from your feeds and it puts it in there. And the only reason I know about it is that I'm did you get featured in it? Did you get mentioned on one all the time? Like yeah. almost that, every month from different people, and I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> yeah, because it sucks stuff out of their Twitter feed, and if you've linked to something interesting, it's like a story by Chris, and yeah. it's just you retweeting something really. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, so I have appeared on a couple of those. Yeah. So do you think it's something that is uh, positive, negative, or just uh, uh, more... I never look at anyone... Auto spam? I, yeah, auto spam. I never look at anyone's unless I'm featured in it. Like yeah. if it comes up, I don't click on it and go follow through. Yeah, yeah. Because I just don't care. I only go in and try and figure out what the hell they picked up of from me. Yeah. To be fair. No, that's cool. I was just wondering about that. Um, the other thing that was new to me that I have come across was... Onion Labs. Have you heard about that? No. What so you know at... The Onion. Yeah. Everybody should know The Onion. The if... Onion Network News. Yeah. It's the at... best news on the planet. Um, but yeah, no. So The Onion, what I didn't realize is that, um, I think this is a couple of years ago they started this. They called it Onion Labs. And they have the creative team from The Onion yeah. um, do marketing campaigns for, for businesses. For actual businesses. For actual businesses. And oh, it cool. came out as a like a we should do this. We got these skills. We got you know writing skills, and we can make things fun and viral and happy and and interesting. We should offer it to businesses. And now eighty percent of their revenue comes from these Onion Labs, and they've oh. done quite a few um, marketing campaigns. And you probably would have seen some really cool campaigns. Yeah. And right um, now, I can't remember any of them. It's on the screen. But yeah. You probably think of some of these campaigns, and then you go. Those were really good. Why was that so cool? It was done by the guys from The Onion, I don't which I re- think is brilliant. I don't remember any of these, but they have worked with Burger King, KFC, uh, Honda. Yeah, because most of them they wouldn't have put in New Zealand. No, no. Audi, Lenovo, YouTube. So it's pretty cool. And that says, uh, yeah, they're the full service agency within the walls of The Onion. So yeah. it's pretty good that they've... Um, well, it's, it's find what you're good at, find your passion, yeah. and find a need, and get paid for it. And yeah. they you know they're loving it, and they the, in the article I read I can't remember where I read it. Um, they did sort of say you know the guy was interviewing them or whatever and said you know do, do people go ah uh, nah when they come up with something he goes well most people who come to them know what they're all about and they know that they're going to take the piss out of the brand as well so they yeah, take the piss yeah. out of the brand they're, they're promoting to you know to a degree um, and it works really well and the audiences really respond to it so um, awesome. good on you Onion Labs if you haven't ever heard of the onion go check it out shame on you go and check it out check out some of their videos they got some of the funniest stuff ever they do right so um that's pretty much well that's not everything i had on my list was it oh yeah did you hear about that george lucas thing and his affordable housing what's george lucas up to does he want to build affordable housing in, or has he come up with I don't know. i was um going to research it more thoroughly we can research it right now live <laughs> Research it live. Um, Google um, George Lucas and affordable housing. And I'm going to chew on another um, milk bottle. Yeah, okay. Uh, Here okay. we go. Jo- the, so the, um, yeah, George Lucas epically trolls rich neighbors by building affordable housing for the poor, apparently. Yeah, sh- can I read that out? You scroll down a bit, right? After his wealthy neighbors opposed his efforts to build another studio, George Lucas decided to build affordable housing for the poor instead with his own money. Now they're enraged. Ha! Uh, in 2012, the Star Wars creator wanted to build a studio on Grady Ranch in Mann County, California, but the project failed after Lucas's rich neighbors opposed the effort, citing environmental and traffic concerns, according to the Washington Post. In fact, the wealthy community opposed the plan so much that they threatened to file a lawsuit against Lucas to stop 
So Lucas decided to drop the plan, and his Lucasfilms company released a statement critical of Marin County residents who fought it. And I won't read that out. Um, deprived of the opportunity to build another studio, Lucas had decided to get even more creative with his property. If he couldn't improve Mar Marin County by building another workplace, he would improve it another way. So he decided to build environmentally friendly, affordable housing for the poor. Yeah. That's a big finger. That's a big middle finger to all the neighbours. And it's sort of pretty cool. Is it but, any type of special housing or is it just... Well, it said environmentally... Oh, okay. I just thought he'd already come up with a plan and it looked like something from Star Wars. But, um, yeah, I, I was just going to say, it's really cool, George, but I'm still not letting you off the hook for having Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I mean, you got a long way to go to get over the Jar Jar Binks thing. Yeah. <laughs> he sure does. I think, I, I, I think Chris has gone silly with the artificial flavour. I know, flavor. the sugar in these things yeah. are awesome. <laughs> the artificial flavour or whatever is getting to him. Now, yeah. you've, you, you've, I don't know why you've put a topic, but you had a topic that talking about trailers, but they've got the five trashiest movie trailers of 2015's come out, and guess what's in it? Any guesses? Go. Kiwi Film, self-funded promotion. Oh, uh, uh, what we do in the shadows? Yep. Oh, really? So... Yeah, so the the top five are The Demon's Rook, Ice Tastrophe, Thin Ice, What We Do in the Shadows, Appetites, and they haven't linked to the other ones. <laughs> Silly website. So it's four. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we'll link to those in the show notes so you can check them out. Yeah, trashiest movie trailers. So they're like they're crap? <clears throat> or they just... The Golden Trailer Awards have been announced ahead of the ceremony in Beverly Hills. Yeah, they recognize creative people who make movie trailers. <laughs> And uh, that, wants to squad. Okay, that wants to start by itself. We'll stop that. So anyway, we'll link them to the show notes and we're going to watch these. Yeah, now. yeah. no, what I was going to talk about was trailers. Was There's been a lot of teasers and trailers going on recently. Obviously, we've had the second Star Wars one come out recently. And and then there was the Batman Superman thing has come out, hasn't yep. it? Yep. And then there was the Ant-Man, which actually was a really cool trailer. I was really impressed with that. I haven't that seen man. that one, actually. Man, that was... I like Because I was like, Ant-Man, seriously, you're going to make a freaking superhero Ant-Man? That looks awesome. It's like... He's the... He's, the, um, he's very similar to Tony Stark in the comics, apparently. Yeah. But, um, but they, they... I was listening to a podcast, um, and they're not sure how they're going to do it, because in the... Uh, in the... Um, in the comics... Back in the day, he was a womanizer and he beat his wife. And they don't know how they're going to show that. And there's a girl in the trailer who looks like his wife from the comics, but they think it's her, his daughter, and that will become Wasp, which is another character in this whole universe. Uh, and is that a bad character? No, I don't think so. Wasp, it's just a character. Wasps are bad. Yeah, I think wasp, wasp girl, wasp. I'm not and, sure. And bumblebees, that that evil. I'm sure that's evil. what I'm I, sure. I I run from them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I did a first aid course and learned all about that. All right, okay, running from bees. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, no, but but seriously though, people are putting well, people, companies, studios are putting so much effort into these um, teasers and, and, and trailers now. Well, you always used to just have a trailer, and now it's, here's a teaser before the trailer. Yeah, or a, a stitch it together, four teasers, make a trailer over a period of four months, or whatever the hell it is. Something silly, yeah. Yeah, um, it's funny because it makes me think of, you know, remember the movie Demolition Man? Yeah. And they listen to the oldies station, yeah, which is yeah. just all ads well that's what we're going to be like soon we'll just be like oh wow there's a new trailer the movie's out who gives a there's a new trailer <laughs> yeah well some of the trailers are real bad at um pretty much describing the whole movie and showing big action points yeah yeah so with that we have come to the end of our podcast chris that went very fast it went really quickly and i think it was the sugar do you think so <laughs> yeah yeah and well, i got a slow slow chewy one in my mouth now and you probably can't hear me properly yeah i bet you say it to all the ladies <laughs> So I'm not sure how to take that. Yeah, one. no, they aren't either. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, don't get me laughing, please don't. So there we go. Uh, you can check us out at facebook.com, the Chris and Sam podcast. We're on Twitter, the Chris and Sam pod. We are. Where else are we? It's just Chris and Sam pod, isn't it? Chris and Sam pod. Forget the. Yeah, that's hard to tell. It's hard yeah. to remember, actually. Yeah, and the Chris and Sam podcast dot com. 
which is the website for all the information and, and all these show um, notes and show all the past and stuff. All the archives are there as well. So yeah. check them out. Check it all out. So we'll catch up with you last no, but last time. Next time. Next time on the Chris and Sam podcast. Bye. See ya. Hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe and we'll catch you next week. Don't forget to tell your friend.